Hello, welcome back. Today I am exactly 30 weeks pregnant. I just wanted to show you the bump. How are you doing? New pregnancy symptom as of this week. I feel like I'm easily able to cut off the blood supply to my extremities. So if I lay up my arm, this will go numb. Or if I lay on my leg, or if I cross my leg weird, my leg will go weird, my leg will go numb. So that's something new, but other than that, we're doing pretty good, pretty good. So today I'm gonna to be talking about things that helped me get through my pregnancy. There were a lot of things that I didn't really think about prior to getting pregnant that would eventually become like really helpful to me. So I thought it would be really helpful for someone who is interested in getting pregnant or is currently pregnant. I'm going to start by talking about more of the objects or like the actual physical things that helped me get through my pregnancy and then later on I'll talk more about the, the things that aren't physical like family and whatnot, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so for starters, I'm going to actually talk about prior to getting pregnant um, in the process something that I used it was called Lydia Pecam I think that's how it's pronounced I'll include a picture um, so it's a supplement my friend recommended it to me for fertility and she swore by it it worked two to three months after starting it I was able to conceive Lydia Pecam it's supposed to help regulate your periods that's what I was told anyways so I just gave it a try and it worked for us. So maybe you guys could try it. Maybe it'll work for you. So I just wanted to show you the next two things. So I brought them out. But basically one thing that most people go through during pregnancy is pain. And there's not a lot of options for pain relief. I don't even trust ibuprofen. It is recommended by doctors, but I still don't trust it. Um, just because I was told by a doctor when I went to the hospital that within the next five years they're most likely not going to recommend it for pregnant women anymore. I quickly learned like alternate ways of dealing with pain during my pregnancy. So during my pregnancy I had brown ligament pain, I had a UTI, I had restless leg syndrome during the night, and now I'm currently dealing with back pain and what has really kind of subsided or eased my pain or got my mind off my pain was this. This is just a back massager. Massage hammer is what it's called. Anytime I've had like icky legs or like a sore muscle, I could always use this and this seems to help really like smooth out the pain or like make it relax um i've also used heat so i have a heating pad this was prescribed to me when i had an injury i only use the lowest level i know to be cautious of high heat during pregnancy so i avoid that i also avoid jacuzzis obviously and then just taking warm baths warm baths has honestly eased a lot of my aches and pains when I had a UTI, when I had round ligament pain, I always knew that some of the pain would subside or when I just took a warm bath, it, I just felt like it would relax my whole body. And when I go into early labor, I honestly think I will be relying on a warm bath to help relax me through my labor, through labor pains and whatnot. Okay, next thing that helped me get through my pregnancy was having lots and lots of underwear but specifically granny panties i love granny panties i wore granny panties before i ever knew i was pregnant just because i feel so like comfortable and free in granny panties and i don't like to be restricted if i like had the option to either wear like a thong or like something lacy or just go to sleep butt naked i'd rather go to sleep butt naked because I just don't like the feeling of being constricted. So during my pregnancy, I started to have like stress incontinence, which is basically where if you sneeze, you cough, 
or you laugh too hard, it makes you leak or like pee a little bit. So I felt like having just like tons and tons of underwear was like really beneficial <laughs> because I'm regularly like having to change my underwear. <laughs> it's, it's TMI, but there have been days where I will pee myself like three times in one night. It's super frustrating, but just having like lots of underwear was really helpful. And the reason why I specifically re recommend the granny panty is just because your body is growing and changing. My stomach is obviously growing out. I feel like my thighs are like getting a little bit bigger. You're just like growing everywhere. And the last thing that makes me feel good or happy or comfortable is having restricted having restrictions especially since I'm getting so much bigger it puts me in like a bad mood so just like having that extra room to grow is really helpful it keeps me like in a good mood too another thing that has helped me get through my pregnancy are king-sized pillows I currently have two king-sized pillows right behind me I use them every night both of them I use a total of three different pillows every single night and I am not one to splurge or like buy too much unnecessary things especially when pregnancy is like a temporary time in your life so I like to save as much money as I can and I haven't gotten like one of those really long pregnancy pillows I just have found comfort in my own you know king size pillows these guys are really soft and comfortable and they really help me manage like my back pain or they also keep me like popped up on my side because you're supposed to lay on your side during your pregnancy either your left or your right side there's not really much options besides that that that's pretty much it just those two an obvious one is tums um a lot of people talk about getting heartburn during their pregnancy it's really common super duper common and tums has always immediately just like cooled off that burning sensation for me and then another one is milk thistle so your thyroid is a gland that's situated right on top of your Adam's apple it produces a lot of hormones and when you first get pregnant sometimes your thyroid is overworking and it's adjusting to the new product the new hormone production for mom and baby so for some women taking the milk thistle can be very beneficial because it helps your thyroid produce the hormones that it needs and it's most beneficial in reducing nausea your nausea is usually caused by your thyroid being overworked so by taking the milk thistle it definitely helped me with my nausea and if you try it it might also help you with your nausea that you might experience in your early pregnancy so I brought another thing with me so in early pregnancy there isn't a lot of movement that's happening there's not really a way of knowing for sure that your baby is there and your baby has a heartbeat so one thing that kind of eased my mind a little bit like reduced my anxiety that I was having about whether or not I could potentially have a miscarriage was getting this a baby Doppler you shouldn't use it more than once a week but basically basically it looks like this you would obviously put this on your stomach and it will magnify the sound of your baby's heartbeat so that you can listen to it I'll include a video of what it looks like in action Next, I'm going to be talking about less of the physical and more of like the non-physical things that help me get through my pregnancy. One of them actually being YouTube. YouTube videos have helped me extremely through my pregnancy. Any question or concern or new symptom that I've had, I've been able to just type into the search bar 
and there is guaranteed to be someone who's experienced the same exact thing that I have. In one of my recent videos, I shared that I thought I had my period, but then right after I had the five days of bleeding, I got a positive pregnancy test. After I got my positive pregnancy test, I had to wait, I think it was like a month after that positive pregnancy test to be able to, to talk to a doctor. So this whole time, instead of freaking out about the five days of bleeding and spotting that I had, I just searched up a YouTube video and someone else explained like what was happening and why it could happen and it just provided a lot of like mental sanities. YouTube is also where I found birthing classes. Especially now during COVID, I have found that a lot of classes are canceled or not an available resource right now. I have had the opportunity to sign up for a Zoom call birthing classes, but I haven't found one that has been as detailed as the video that I'm currently watching through YouTube. I'm just the kind of person that doesn't like to not know ahead of time what to be, what to expect, what to be prepared for. So having the resource of YouTube and everybody else's experience and all the birthing videos and videos talking about what to expect if you get a c-section or what to bring in your hospital bag, having that resource at the touch of my fingers has been so amazing, especially when like my doctor's visits have literally been just like 15 minutes, if that, at a time. So just having that resource to teach my own self how to deal with pregnancy, how to deal with labor, has been super duper helpful. Okay, so another place that has been a helpful resource for me during my pregnancy has actually been Facebook Marketplace. So all the big things that I need during my pregnancy that I don't want to spend a ton of money and I don't want anybody else to spend a ton of money on, I have used Facebook Marketplace for. So that would be like my bassinet. I had got my bassinet off of Facebook Marketplace. I also got my crib off of Facebook Marketplace. I've gotten a few of the bigger, more expensive, pricey items from Facebook Marketplace and I paid like just a small portion of what they originally go for, for something that is only gonna be used temporarily. Obviously things that can't be bought used like baby bottles i will be asking for in my registry i created a registry and then i think that after we have the baby shower i'll just go through everything that we received and just after that start looking for everything that we still need okay so the next thing that helped me get through my pregnancy was working out I have dealt with fatigue at the beginning of my pregnancy and now that I'm in my third trimester, I'm also experiencing that fatigue again. And one thing that I have noticed is that even though I am fatigued, when I work out, that actually boosts my energy and I get energy after I work out and then I will have energy the next day too. It also like boosts my mood and it, and it makes me feel better. It just makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm actively working on something now that will be useful when I go into labor. I'm building those muscles that I'm going to need when I go into labor. It's also been a great way for me and Alex to bond before baby gets here. We've been able to go on a, like, a lot of hikes and trails together and it's brought us closer because it gives us time to talk to each other. So I just recommend that if you're gonna get pregnant or if you're currently pregnant, please get a gym membership or just go on a hike, go on a walk. 30 minutes a day is all you need to keep that stamina and just boost your mood a little bit. But then on the flip side, I also recommend that you take it slow. As in, don't overdo it. Don't go too hard. Give yourself breaks. I have given myself restless legs or like leg cramps because I know I am not going easy enough on my body. That means I'll be up all day standing, not taking the appropriate amount of breaks or just 
sitting and elevating my feet for a little bit and then as a result I'll be up all night with like leg leg pain or back pain because I didn't take it slow because I didn't relax a little bit just understand that you are creating a life you're building a body inside of you and that is super hard on your body you're you're also pumping like double the amount of blood in there there's just so much going on like you have to understand that you need to take it slow and it's okay to take it slow and it's okay to let somebody else do things for you even if you don't look pregnant even when you're you're not showing you should accept help from other people and that leads me into my next recommendation for your pregnancy really find a support system and I mean actual like physical people like something about people who are physically there for you uh, besides like on the internet or online there's there's a huge difference people who are physically there for you can physically see how you're doing can physically interact with you and I feel like there's something about having someone who understands you and looks at you and can see how you're doing and how you're feeling and ask how you're doing how you're feeling can make a huge difference in your pregnancy um, but then on the contrary I just think it would be a really good idea to start weeding out those people who aren't supporting you, who aren't making an effort to ask you how you're doing, who aren't offering to help when you're going through the most like life-changing moment in your life. Um, even if it's family. Um, I've, I personally had to shut down or like close ties with people who just weren't supporting me, you know? And right now is a good time to be selfish. You want the best for yourself, obviously, but your baby. So if there's somebody who's like toxic or negative in your life and you're feeling like emotionally drained about that, instead of being able to focus on what you need for your baby, I just recommend that you cut those people out. It can be hard. Um, maybe don't talk to them as much. Maybe don't interact with them as much because especially during your first pregnancy, there's so many changes and so many other things with this pregnancy that you have to focus on. Somebody who's being negative towards you shouldn't have your time. Plus, those positive people who are in your life who do support you can do more than just support you emotionally. Um, I talked about when you need help say well we're about to move alex and i are alex and i we are potentially going to be moving this month possibly we're at like 90 percent sure we're moving we're just waiting for some small finer details and we have those positive people in our life who are going to offer to help us move everything over so those people those positive people keep those people around keep those relationships strong make sure that they know that you appreciate them so much so that they will stick around during your pregnancy and after your pregnancy because relationships in your life are very valuable so i'm so thankful for the people that i have in my life unfortunately it's more people who are on alex's side than my side of the family but I, I hope they know that I value them very much and everything that they've done for me and I would love to return the same amount of support that they've given me. It's just right now I have to be a little bit more selfish towards myself, towards my baby. Like all I can think about right now is my baby. Like pregnancy is already hard. Like it's hard on me physically and sometimes it can get me emotionally down. But when I have that support system, it makes things a little bit lighter, a little bit easier. Like I can take a breath because I know that somebody is there supporting me. Also having a supportive partner like Alex, someone that I can regularly talk to about what I'm going through or what I learned today, it helps us 
both be able to one bond better but really retain the information that I'm gonna need later on during my pregnancy when I eventually go into early labor so and then when I eventually have my son so the last thing that has really gotten me through my pregnancy was interactions with the baby first it started with ultrasounds because I couldn't see or feel him and I didn't have a bump when I first saw his heartbeat on our first ultrasound I bawled because it was our first interaction I mean I knew I felt sick I knew that I had fatigue and I had food aversion so I knew he was there but actually seeing some sort of like physical like vision or image of him really made me more encouraged in my pregnancy eventually i did start going a little bump and then i started feeling his kicks and then his kicks have started to get stronger but every new like change or adjustment that he has made like every time i've been able to interact with him has helped me stay strong it's helped me feel more encouraged and like excited to meet him to know that there is a positive and happy end goal to this something that like also felt really good was like the first time he had hiccups and he has not stopped hiccuping since then but that started happening like two or three weeks ago it's just every new change every shift in motion that tells me he's alive and he's here it's made my mental well-being it's made me feel more positive so those are all the things that i wanted to share all the physical and then the more hypothetical but i hope this was helpful for you if you're not pregnant yet but you're trying to get pregnant i hope this is good advice for you to hold on to for the future something to think about there are a lot of things that i'm learning on a daily basis just because i'm so obsessed with like watching pregnancy videos or like and if you are pregnant i hope that this was relatable i hope you found this video interesting i am currently 30 weeks like i said we might be moving soon just so we have a bigger space for our baby but yeah so i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching